Hi everyone, this is Bruno Aziza and I'm here with Sean and he is the brain behind the anomaly detection design pattern that we are launching this week. If you saw our earlier videos, these design patterns are designed to help you get started and develop a solution to a business problem you have. So Sean, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Tell us, first of all, what is anomaly detection and why does it matter? Oh, thanks for having me, Bruno. I appreciate it. You know, first I need to let you know that I've had three cups of coffee today in the hope that I can show up here with at least half as much energy as you do, but I don't think it's going to cut it. I need to figure out what you have for breakfast and have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> but anyway, with that, let's, let's talk about anomaly detection, right? Let me, let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, let's assume this were a regular working day and you had to drive into work, right? You probably saw hundreds and hundreds of cars on the road. What right. are the one or two cars that you're going to remember? Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, my commute was actually pretty easy this morning, but you're right that if I, if I drive to work, I don't know. I probably remember a couple of cars. Maybe I maybe I saw three red cars, but apart from yeah, that, maybe, I don't maybe know. one with a flashy paint, or maybe one that is outsized, right? Be it small on the smaller side or, or a large car, right? Yeah. Now let me give you another scenario, right? I've got an eighteen month toddler at home. She's a bundle of energy, always running around doing things, asking for things. And and she's around us, right? So she fades into the background and then we, we go on with our life. But the minute that she's out of sight and we don't hear anything from her, that's when we know she's up to something, right? She's probably getting ready to test out whether electrocution is fake news or not, right? She's probably grabbing something, trying to insert the power socket. Now, what is common between these two scenarios? It is the fact that, right, you've got a constant stream of data coming at you, but the data that is outlier or that is unlike the others is the one that is most interesting. Right? It gives you valuable perspective, tells you something new, and in my case, potentially helps me avoid danger. Now, that's basically what anomaly detection is. Right? Now, beyond those you know, simple, straightforward examples, you know, it has a lot of applications for our customers. Right? Let me give you a few examples. Yeah. Let's say you're an e-commerce provider. Right? You know, monitoring your transaction data, monitoring your card data, monitoring your order information, inventory information, real-time means, you're going to be able to detect fraud much better and prevent fraudulent activities before it's too late. Here's another example. Let's say you're a manufacturing customer, right? You've got hundreds and hundreds of equipment in your factory floor, right? Now, being able to analyze um, sensor data that is coming from those equipment in real time and being able to detect anomalous patterns means you're able to schedule proactive maintenance for maybe equipment that is going to, you know, that needs uh, maintenance. Or, you know, you can pull out equipment from your factory floor before it is too late, right? Otherwise, you're going to be able to, uh, you're going to be dealing with expensive repairs, or even in some cases, you'll have to shut down your entire factory floor, right? They are leading to significant losses. You know, we talked about e-commerce here, talking about manufacturing, but of course, anomaly detection is appropriate in financial services, in telecommunications. So many of the folks listening to us will be able to apply that for their business, really, regardless what industry. So you wrote a great detailed blog on the techniques being used and how people can take advantage of it. Take us through some of them. We published uh, three different patterns as of today, right? So the, the first one, you know, we worked with the telecommunications customer, um, you know, to build uh, a network log based anomaly detection or intrusion detection system. Mm -hmm. So this customer had a rule based system in place, right? So rule based systems are when, you know, you know of a specific, you know, pattern or a signature for an intrusion and then you codify that in your system, right? That works great. But the significant drawback of that is it can only detect known patterns, right? Now, we all know the dynamic world that we uh, live in, right? Now, there are new forms of you know, network attacks every day, right? It's a constantly evolving landscape. And so we work with the customer to implement AI technique called K-means clustering. It's basically an unsupervised learning technique uh, to implement in, in our network detection um, a system uh, based on their net, uh, net flow logs. Yep. Now, let me give you another example, right? So we work with a customer uh, who's basically a SaaS platform. Uh, you know, they're a digital trust and safety platform, basically provide anomaly detection as a service for their customers. Uh, who are mostly you know financial services and e-commerce and uh, digital commerce lenders, right? So we, um, you know, that that customer was able to leverage some of the patterns that we published to very quickly get up and running, roll out a production system, and in fact they were able to very quickly go to market and scale and 
meet the needs of some of the very large customers, right? And th- their customers are some of the biggest names that you would uh, think of when, I, when you think about digital commerce, right? So what we are seeing is customers are now able to start not necessarily from, from the ground floor, right? They've already got the scaffolding in place. They've got a system that is architected based on best practices. Um, they're able to bring their knowledge of their business, their domain, and really fine tune the system so that they're able to better serve the needs of their business. Right at the end, that's what we want customers to be able uh, to do. Right? It doesn't make sense for every single customer to uh, you know cobble together a system, spend a lot of energy in building out a system. They should really be focused on how do they bring their knowledge of their business, things that they're unique to the business, and apply that to the patterns that we provide so that they're able to see value really, really quickly. That's right. Well, Sean, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. There's a blog that's coming at you with the reference to all these techniques and these customer examples. And like Sean just explained, you know, the goal here is to take best practices we've learned from customers and then give you the working code, the samples, the technical guidance, so you can apply this at your own company and accelerate uh, your, your path to value. Sean, thank you so much for the time again. The links are down here. We want to know what you think about these patterns. And we also want to know if there are patterns you want us to develop. Don't be shy. Put them in comments. And we'll talk to you very soon. Fantastic. Thanks, Bruno.